the account down. We, oh, Sarah. <laughs> All right, well, we just saw Sarah. Well, uh, welcome everyone to our Facebook Live. I am Amanda McCrossin back here for a little California wine and cheese pairing. Oh, Sarah's back, perfect. Um, and we have an amazing guest with us today, a, a board aficionado, um, certainly someone who is skilled in a department where I am not, and I'm thrilled to have her as my guide this, this afternoon slash evening, wherever you're joining us from. Um, so with me today, we're, we're with Sarah, uh, Sarah Gim. Um, I should have asked you to say your last name because then I, then I questioned <laughs> myself. Um, Sarah Gim from The Delicious Life, uh, at The Delicious on Instagram. Sarah, welcome. Tell me who you are and what you do. Um, hi, I'm ex super excited to be here. Um, all, I, all I do is make cheese boards <laughs> that it you say um, all like it's nothing yeah i mean it is really um nothing <laughs> but um yeah i mean i i like to put all the boards together take pictures put it on instagram um and obviously drink wine so i'm super excited to learn how to put some really outstanding pairings together with this stuff today well you are in the right place. We're going to do all those things. We're going to eat cheese. We're going to drink wine. We're going to have a lot of fun while doing it because that is what our jobs are anymore. So lucky us, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a beautiful board in front of you, which we're definitely going to talk about. I have a very simple board of cheese. It is literally just cheese in a plate. Um, and you have outdone me because that is what you do for a living. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about cheese in California. And I wanted to sort of kick it off with you know, cheese is something that I love. I assume it's probably something that you love, but I was curious, you know, what is your first memory of cheese? I think it's, you know, been in so many people's lives for such a long time, but, you know, it stems from an early age generally. So was it like grilled cheese, string cheese, or like just cheese in general? I mean, it's, I, I feel like everyone, like, I mean, I've been eating it my whole life, so I can't remember something <laughs> specific. Um, I, I actually do remember like seeing other kids in school with Lunchables, okay. <laughs> which I feel like is basically what a cheese board is now for adults. But I did, I never totally. got to have that in elementary school. Um, so I think that's why I'm like super into it now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the first memory of cheese is always just um, nachos and okay. like taco bars and stuff because I grew up in Texas. So that's like kind of how it started. I loved it because it was like salty and melty and, you know. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you had melted cheese? That's one of those, like, there's, there's a comedian that's got a skit and he was like, the first time I had melted cheese, it was like a revelation. Just like, I didn't even know this was possible for cheese <laughs> to get better than it already was being all melty and delicious in your mouth. Um, I don't remember specifically, but I, you know, we didn't get to eat pizza a lot when we were little. Okay. So that was a major treat for us to okay. like have. <laughs> And I remember thinking, this is so cool that like the cheese is melting and like it's all stringy and it's that's <laughs> the super fun, exciting part about it. So yeah, and like um, the runny like cheeses now are kind of like that. I mean, we don't have like melted yeah. cheeses on boards, but we have the like the bloomy rind cheeses, like what we have here that are going to be runny and they, they pull apart a little bit and they're really soft and stuff. So. Well, I, you know, I think we've learned as even as kids that there is a wide array of different cheeses across the board. They can come from all over the world. We're talking just about California cheeses today because, of course, we are on the California Wines channel and um, we're thrilled to have a great representation of California cheeses and all different styles, all different flavors. Um, and so we're going to be talking about not only those flavors individually and those cheeses individually, but, of course, how to pair them with wine and then also how to build your board. So, um Sarah, are you aware that there's an actual cheese trail in California? Like this is a very big thing in the state of California. Okay, so I only learned about this <laughs> very recently. Um, and now it's like on my list of things to do. Yes. Um, I mean, I know there are a lot of um, cheese artisans around California, obviously because of the dairy here, but I did not know there was one specific thing. So there tell, is. tell me all about it. So I yes, can you it. can explore so much like you can explore the entire state of California via wine. You could also use cheese as your guide. Um, so Vivian Strauss, and you, you're maybe familiar with the Strauss family. Um, it is my go to. It was a revelation when I moved to California, the Strauss butter and milk situation and Strauss ice cream blew my mind. So for those who don't know what Strauss is, S-T-R-A-U-S, Strauss is a, a dairy farm family owned and operated for 
you know, goodness only knows how long, but um, famously, you know, Thomas Keller, it's the only butter that he uses in any of his restaurants is the Strauss butter, but Vivian Strauss of the Strauss family started this thing called the Cheese Trail, and the history of cheese in California actually goes back all the way to the 1800s, and um, I don't know why I didn't realize this until I Googled it, um, but did you know that Monterey Jack is actually from Monterey? <laughs> okay, that I knew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, you have one up on me because I do not. I read, I read that and I was like, oh, you dummy. That makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, it is from Monterey. I mean, not all of it that's out there that's called Monterey Jack is from sure. Monterey. Or a lot of it isn't. But yeah, that's, that's so, cool. yeah, that is call that ours. Yeah, that is a just, and there's, you know, there's several others uh, in the state of California that are uniquely Californian. Um, Monterey, of course, you know, being one of them, Monterey Jack being one of them. But yes, you can explore the entire state of California and there are, um, a ton of different cheese landmarks, literally from all the way in Northern California down to Tijuana, where you could potentially, you know, follow the map and go all the way down or go all the way up or make a couple different stops. And um, I just think that's such a cool thing about the state of California that you can literally like just eat your way through the state and maybe have some wine alongside. Who knew? Maybe, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have, um, we've got a few different types of cheeses in front of us. And of course, cheese, like so many wonderful things in this world, you know, you can dive really, really deep into the geeky parts of it. it you know, everything from, um, you know, what region it's coming from, you know, the type of animal, the style, the aging process. Um, it can get very, very complicated. So we are going to focus on just, you know, sort of the general category, <laughs> general categorizations um, this afternoon. Sarah's going to take us through, um, you know, the four cheeses that we've got. Uh, uh, you know, sort of we'll talk about what they taste like and then we'll talk about that beautiful board that is in front of you right now, Sarah, that I'm just drooling over. So can you talk a little bit about the cheeses that we've got in front of us? Sure. Um, we have four cheeses. You might not be able to see them here. Um, and I will I will hold them up. Pour, actually, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to start with the Mount Tam, which is the Bloomy Rind. And the Bloomy Rind is basically anything that's I mean, a lot of us are familiar with brie and camembert. It's the little round. It's really soft inside. It gets great at room temperature and all melty. Yeah, that looks yep. like practically, right? <laughs> um, it's mild. Um, and it's a great way to start because it, it is like a milder, um, cheap, soft, great to start with. Um, that's why it's over here. We're going like this way, left to right or right to left. I'm not sure. Okay, so there is a method to your madness with the board and like how people would approach it. Yes, I mean, it looks a little bit like there's everything on here in, you know, under the sun. But when I'm putting something out, it, it is nice to have kind of like an order, just mm -hmm. so like people can, if they want to start on one side and move along because you want to have like the strongest cheeses at the end, something light and um, milder in the beginning. So you're not like doing just like with wine, right? Sure. Yeah. So um, the second one is, let's see, what do we want to do with the second one? The second one is this one. This is Fiscalini, okay. um, San Joaquin Gold. That's this one here, this pretty little package. And I think this and is think this one on my plate. That, yes. Yes. It's, it's, um, I love this one. It's new to me. Um, also, I mean, these are all cow dairy. So yes. it kind of has like a, it's more savory. It's a little bit stronger. It's kind of a blend between, for me, like an aged cheddar or a Parmesan. Um, but it's still a little soft, a little bit right. softer than that. So that's yeah. how, that's why I could slice it. Um, you could also like crumble it up on the board too. Okay. Um, so that's over here. This is the, okay, somebody has to help me with the pronunciation the, on this. The, oh, the, st I, st I just said stight. I don't know if that's correct. Stoyt, S-T-U-Y-T. So for those of you who know how to say things better than myself and maybe Sarah, S-T-U-Y-T is our, um, is our dairy and it's the diamond reserve. I think that is what you're pointing yes. to. Yes, and yeah. I, I love this one because the name does have the word diamond in it. Yes. So um, it's a raw milk cheese and it's it's also like a, um, like a very savory, salty cheese because it's been aged a little bit longer than, you know, say the bloomy rind kind. Okay. Um, and I had a little bit of trouble just slicing this one because there are like crystals in it. That's there are. I noticed that last night. Yeah. Yes. Kind of yummy, like, crystals. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 
for when I first started eating like fancier cheeses beyond like baby bell and stuff, um, I thought the crystals were a flaw. Oh. I was like, oh my gosh, like what, what is, what are these little parts of my cheese? cheese? And what it is, is it's kind of telling you like, this is really aged, it's mm. delicious. It's like having um, the flaky sea salt on food. It makes Ooh, it a little bit crunchy too. That so, is totally what it feels like. Yeah, yes. love that. Um, and then the last one we have is the Point Reyes Blue. Yes. Um, this is, I, I keep saying this is my favorite or I, I've been saying that for like <laughs> the last three hours. I've been saying, this is my favorite, this is my favorite. They're all my favorite. Um, yes. so this, is a, this is actually kind of like a milder blue. Um, yes, I noticed that. It, it looks super veiny, like it has a lot of the blue in it so mm -hmm. it looks kind of intimidating in the beginning um, mm -hmm. but you taste it and especially when you pair it with other things it's so good so and that's like the last thing that we have over here Perfect. So those are the cheeses i love it um we should uh go back through your board so you we basically the way that you've done it is like you said mild just sort of strongest and so there's you know a theme to the board and how someone may approach that but as you're building this board um, you know, what are you thinking about as far as like the things that are going around it? Because, you know, obviously I just have my beautiful cheeses just on the plate, but you've sort of filled in the gaps um, between the different cheeses. So can you talk to me about your approach and like, and actually, you know, concepting this board and building this board? Um, yeah, I mean, you kind of want to go off of some of the flavors that are in the cheese. Okay. Um, so you can bring out like around each of the cheeses, there are things that you want to like, guide people towards eating together if they want okay. to. Um, I also have the crackers on the board. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean like people can't like put different things from over here. Sure, over here. Yeah. I mean, the board isn't that big, but sure. um, like with um, this, with the Fiscalini, uh -huh. because it's very salty uh, and aged and you know, the cheddar parmesan -y thing, what I really wanted to put with it was something sweet, but also that reminds you of something savory. Okay. For example, so this is um, an onion jam, a caramelized onion jam. Ooh. So it's sweet. Um, and I actually made it with a little bit of rosé. Um, it's sweet, but oh, it reminds nice. you that it's like a savory thing. Okay. And that kind of like, you know, you kind of put things together that go together, um, but everything on the board works together so okay you know, yeah so so with the um with the mount tam you is it um what is the like the rind on top of it? is it a blood orange on top of it this is a blood orange crisp okay so um these i put with like something that's really mild it's good to put it's fun to put something okay. that's bitter um i mean traditionally you would most like what I usually do is I put would put a wedge a little tiny wedge of this on a mild cracker and then put preserves on there honey something like okay. that um, what's really fun to do though is to put something bitter just to see um, if something bitter can come out of the cheese I mean not bitter but um, a complimentary flavor so beautiful um, blood orange crisp there there are also candied oranges over here so you can kind of like try it over here these are sweet so, okay. and then when you're, so obviously you, you're building the board with, you know, flavors in mind, you know, trying to keep the audience in mind as well. But as you, as like, you know, first I'm walking to your cheese board, I'm like, wow, this is really beautiful. Um, you know, what is the sort of, not the instructions, but like, what's the preferred method? Like, am I taking, you know, a piece of cheese and then like the crisp and then like taking one bite, am I eating one after the other? Like, and we're gonna talk a little bit about wine pairings and you know, how the cheeses are, are playing with that. But um, is this like a one bite situation? Like, you know, you mentioned kind of drizzling some things on top. Can you do like a combination of different types of things? Definitely a combination. I mean, I have been known to just take a slice of cheese off the board and just eat it straight. Sure. Um, but I think that that's always like a good way to start with every cheese that's on the board for anybody is to try the okay. cheese by itself or with a very just plain cracker. Um, mm -hmm. Then you can you can get a feel for what the cheese tastes like, the texture, and then you can kind of experiment with the things on top. I I usually like to put cheese with something together. Um, okay. 
I would things like olives on the board and nuts are usually bites that I take in between. Okay. So like um, sort of like palate cleansers? Palate cleansers. Okay. Uh, even though they have very strong flavor. Sure. Um, but it's like a little like refresh, yeah, I mean, right? So you, you don't get like palate yeah. fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, because you don't want to be taking too many sips of wine there before you get a little bit full on cheese first. Speak so. for yourself, lady. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Speaking of, can I pour myself something? Yes. That we're oh, please. Start with? Yes. We should drink some wine while we're doing this. That's what we're okay. going to do. So, yeah, drink, um, pour a little Sauvignon Blanc. So, we've got the Mary Edwards Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, let's talk a little bit about wine for a minute, give you a break so you can have some wine. Um, yes. We have three wines that we are working with today. They could not be more different, um, but they all play with cheese really, really well. So as Sarah's talking about all the different flavors that can come out of cheeses by way of incorporating, you know, accessory foods like the blood orange and the nuts and the olives and the caramelized onions, you know, the same thing can be said for wine. So as we're sort of talking about, about wine and cheese pairings, just remember there's no sort of um, you know, we're not super dogmatic about anything and there is no, there are some rules and some guidelines and some things to follow to help, you know, lead your journey. But um, the best thing that you can do is sort of, you know, this cheese board is a great example of that. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, be drinking tons of wine while you're trying to figure out what wines to pair. Um, as you take little bites of cheese, you know, grab a piece of fruit and see how that plays with it. You know, whether it's a citrus fruit or, a, you know, blackberry or, um, you know, a nut or something like that, and just see how it plays with your mouth. And that should sort of inform how, um, you know, you want those, those flavors to pan out when it comes to the wine. So three different wines, I think, you know, we'll just broadly say across the board, one of the biggest misconceptions is that um, red wine and cheese are, uh, go together. And that is, um, I won't say it's wrong, but it is, uh, it's, one of, it's one of those things that people are like, oh yeah, red wine and cheese. And for the longest time I was like, oh yeah, red wine and cheese. And I was, uh, I was quickly humbled by a wonderful sommelier friend of mine who worked at a very fancy restaurant called the Burn It Down. And she was like, no, 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 <laughs> we don't do red wine and cheese. Uh, if you're going to do a red wine, it should be sort of light and fruity and soft and tannin structure. And she was totally right. Um, and so one of the things she did for me was this very, very classic pairing of fresh goat cheese, so Chev, uh, from the Loire Valley with a little bit of uh, Sancerre. And you know, this notion of what grows together goes together is something that we've talked a lot about during this series. And so we're always trying to take those sort of concepts and move them into California to see how they play. So when you're thinking about cheese, a lot of times the best pairings are going to be white wines because cheese has a ton of acidity. Um, and you really want a little bit of acid to sort of match up to that um, and refresh your palate you know keep in mind not only does it have acidity but it's got you know richness and fattiness and layers and so you, you know want extra acidity to make sure you're cutting through that so Sauvignon Blanc you know one of the great great wines to pair with cheese sort of across the board and as we think about you know this beautiful cheese board in front of us you know we've got many different cheeses and a lot of different flavors how do you approach this big wide board what single wine do you choose if you had to choose one and i would say Sauvignon Blanc is probably your best bet it's the cleanest it's the brightest um, it tends to be the most um the most friendly with lots of different types of cheeses and this is an absolute classic um Sarah, are you familiar with mary edwards i was not but oh. i I tried it and this is, I mean, I love this. Yes. I love it. This is not just a classic, but this is an icon. So Mary Edwards is a person. Her full name is Meredith Edwards. She um, went to uh, went to school for enology. Actually, there's a really fun tie-in that I totally accidentally did. Um, so her very, very good friend, uh, Andrew Quady, who's Essencia Muscat, we're going to be tasting um, sort of towards the end of this she was actually inspired by him while she was in school because he was pursuing a degree in enology and it was his uh his book and him personally that inspired mary edwards to actually get into enology back in the 70s which is pretty cool and they've remained friends ever since so completely random that i selected those two wines to be part of the same oh my lineup gosh. um there must isn't be that a cool? reason <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But Mary, you know, super famous. She made, you know, really, really classic, iconic wines back in the 70s and 80s, sort of started her own thing in the 90s and early, uh, er, late 80s and er, all throughout the 90s, um, and then started her own winery called Mary Edwards and, you know, got very, very famous for her Pinot Noirs, but then also her barrel aged or barrel fermented Sauvignon Blanc from the Russian River Valley. And it is to this day, 
one of the highly, most highly rated Sauvignon Blancs in California. It is what we consider the standard bearer, the benchmark for California Sauvignon Blanc. And we think of, you know, producers like, um, like Spotswood and like Lale and Mary Edwards sort of all in the same uh, breath because they're just so iconic. So um, I love this Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc in particular, one, because, you know, it's classic and iconic and we love that Mary Edwards made it, but also because it is a little bit more, um, a little bit more rich. So as you're talking about lots of different cheeses, especially this Mount Tam, you know, creamy cheeses like this tend to want something a little bit more unctuous, like a Chardonnay. Um, a wine like this sort of emulates those flavors because it was barrel fermented, which means instead of this the Sauvignon Blanc going into a stainless steel tank, it went into a barrel and it sort of picks up some of those more baking spice, toasty, um, you know, clove, cardamom, cinnamon flavors really, really early on. And it gets a little bit more broadness. So we sometimes think about Sauvignon Blanc as being really light, really bright, um, and a little bit, uh, you know, more on, on the watery side of things than the viscous mm -hmm. side of things. Um, and so this wine gives you all those great herbaceous aromatics, all the things that we love about Sauvignon Blanc with its great acidity, but it also has a lot, a lot of texture. So um, that is why we selected this wine, but you know, you could really go with any sort of Sauvignon Blanc for, um, for a cheese board, you know, obviously we'd prefer to be from California because we crush Sauvignon Blanc so hard. Um, but what do you think of this wine? I'm, I'm gonna take a sip. Yum. Um, you know, I, I love it. And it was surprising to me because like you said, what what we think about with Sauvignon Blanc is that it's really light. And yes. I was like, oh, well, you know, that works with cheese and wine and fruit and, and you know, maybe some of the nuts and stuff. Um, but it was surprising to me because it's also like really fragrant to me. I, yes. Maybe it's- No, it's off, incredibly but, fragrant. Um, yeah. And I think what, what worked with this for me was that it kind of has a lot of different flavors in there or fragrances. Yes. Smells. Yes. So it's it works- very complex. Lot, like, when you're tasting a lot of these things, you can kind of, you know, see like, oh, it's a little bit like maybe some apple or maybe a little bit of, it's easy yeah. to like, it's easier to um, get those things. Like it's different when someone's like, oh, can you smell or taste the apple in this wine? And, and then to actually taste a bite of an apple mm -hmm. with some cheese on there. Um, yeah, so I love it. This was oh, good. a good one. I'm so glad. So this um, this Sauvignon Blanc can really pair with any of the cheeses on, in front of us right now. Um, the, the one exception I would say is the blue cheese, which really tends to compete a little bit with those herbaceous flavors, you know, just the nature of it being blue. It tends to either want a red wine or a sweet wine. So, you know, blue, you have it at the end of your cheese board. It's a very, very strong flavor. You know, will it work? You know, if you're doing a party and you want a blue cheese in there and you just need one wine, absolutely go for it. Um, but if you were just doing a single sit down wine pairing, this is something that I would sort of say, you know, maybe maybe save the blue for a different wine, uh, save it for that red wine that we're gonna get to in just a second. Um, and then the other thing I wanna say is we don't have any sort of uh, like fresh cheeses, um, but any sort of like fresh cheese, you know, fresh goat cheese of any kind is gorgeous with Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and you definitely wanna be on the lighter side of things. You wanna capture that acidity um, with every single bite. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, uh, or I'm gonna taste um, and just let you know how this is supposed to be done because uh, nobody told me <laughs> once upon a time. Um, but when we think about our palate and how it's, you know, how it's feeling, you know, your palate's always at a certain pH level. Um, we generally like it to be at sort of a neutral, you know, in that like five or six area. Um, anytime you put any sort of substance into your mouth, it's going to adjust it. And so I'm always trying to um, get my palate to a level like ready prime for whatever is coming at it. So generally what I'll do is take a little sip of the wine. I'll let my um, palate sort of reset. I'll take a bite of the cheese, kind of chew that up. And then immediately after, don't take a sip of water in between, you know, maybe take a few breaths, but then take your sip of wine after and let all of those things sort of come back to you. And that is really the true food and wine pairing, cheese and wine pairing experience that you should be filling in your mouth. And as you said before, you know, look for those little flavors. Food is a really wonderful thing to pair with wine, not just because it's delicious, but also if you're trying to figure out or get more in tune with your palate, it can really, really inform um, and, and like highlight some of the things that you weren't tasting in the wine or the cheese before. So um, all of these cheeses go brilliantly. I'm going to take a little bite, like I just said. Okay, which one are you tasting? I have the Viscolini. Oh, the Fiscalini. Which I think, okay, I think pairs best. I'm going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm pouring I think the Fiscalini is the best too. with the Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> yes, you should. Um, and the reason I really like this is, you know, it's sort of a nuttier cheese. It's really salty. But 
It's also kind of on the mild side. Like I think your description of it, like sort of a, a slightly more aged cheddar is a mm -hmm. you know, perfect descriptor for this cheese. And so as we take a sip of wine, what I love is all of those like almonds have sort of turned into pistachios. <laughs> they get a little bit more green. And so, you know, this, this cheese sort of turns um, in a direction that like lends itself to even more nutty flavors, but it gets pistachio, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. It, 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 like, you know, all the whole nut world sort of opens up on your palate. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I wish I had some pistachios on this board. All right. Next time. Next time. <laughs> How awesome is that? Um, we did have a question come in, and it's a really good question. When I was, I had meant to ask you, when you are doing a cheese board, what do you think is the appropriate number of cheeses to put on the board, or is, is there one? Um, I, I think it's always good to go with three to five cheeses, no matter how many people you have. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, unless it's one person. Um, even then, three cheeses is fine. <laughs> <Just being right. laughs> <Be honest. laughs> um, I think like a lot of people do go with, you know, start to think like, oh, when you have more people, you want to have more different like flavors and types of cheeses. And what mm -hmm. the best thing to do is just get more of the same that you have if you have a larger group. But three to five is good. Um, Otherwise you get, you know, it, it's kind of like with wine, right? You don't want to have like more than you can sure. not taste and remember and really appreciate. So no, it's true. Um, you know, our palate only has so much, so much memory and so much space and you need to give it time to like take in all those flavors. And, you know, palate fatigue is a very real thing. You can get, you can wear your palate out very quickly with too many flavors. So three to five, that's, that's, that's what you're saying. Three to five. And normally, I like odd yeah. numbers just because I don't know okay. why. That's, that's a weird thing, but it's, it, I like odd numbers. We have four on this board, but you can't tell okay. if it's okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's like three or five. Four is okay too. <laughs> All right. Um, we have another question that I will get to uh, regarding truffled liver pate uh, and the addition of it to a cheese board. and. I do love truffled liver pate, but we are getting into a territory of like strong, strong flavors. So I'm going to wait um, till we get to strong, strong flavor territory to sort of talk about that. Um, I am going to just for the purposes of this, this very fun exercise, um, just talk a little bit about why blue cheese and the Sauvignon Blanc doesn't work. Cause I think it's, you know, it's one of those things that we should talk about like where the competition lies. And again, it's not that you, sh you, you can't do it. It's just, you know, when you're thinking about your palate, you want to think about, you know, how you're dressing yourself in the morning, right? Like you're not going to wear a cocktail dress to work and you're not going to wear that with sneakers and you're not going to like, you know, put your hair up in a messy bun. Maybe you will. I don't know what kind of Instagram somebody has out there, but, I mean, that's the thing. but you know, you, you're thinking always about what's going to work best for you. Um, and so blue cheese is super, super strong flavor. So why does this not work? Well, I'm Let's going to see why it doesn't work. Let's see why it doesn't work. It's really crumbly. Really strong, very bitter. You know, you think so it's like, good. it's really good. And this, I will say this is the most mild, as you said before, you know, mild of the blue cheeses. So you take a sip of this. And it's fine, but what happens is all of that bitterness is exacerbated by the Sauvignon Blanc. It's not bad. It just intensifies the bitter. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm thinking about blue cheese, I'm thinking about a very strong flavor that wants to be anchored by something else, not uh, accentuated. You know, we're always thinking about, you know, when when we want some, when we're thinking about pairings, we're thinking about either opposites attract or like same and same. And this is sort of um, almost too much of the same. Like it's almost too much like moving in one direction of bitter. So, um, you know, this is, like I said, a more mild version of blue cheese. So it's not terrible. Like it totally would be fine on your cheese board, but um, that is typically the reason that this doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't really, you know, it works a little bit um, with this gorgeous Mount Tam that this is not just decorative that I took a chunk out of, I actually did eat that. Um, <laughs> um, it just, you know, it tends to tends to want a little bit more richness than this wine is giving you. But like I said, if you get this wine down to a temperature, don't drink it super, super cold, get it down to like a nice 55 degrees, it'll start to amp up and give you a little bit more viscosity and weight. And of course, um, we should talk about serving temperatures of cheeses before we move into our next wine. So um, tempering cheese, I mean, are you getting it out of the fridge ahead of time? You know, what is, do you have an idea for like ideal serving temperatures? 
Yeah, I mean, cheese is like wine. It has to be at the right temperature. And um, even though I say like, generally there are no rules for cheese boards or cheese, the one rule that I always do stick to no matter what is that you've got to take the cheese out of the fridge an hour before you're gonna serve it. Okay. Um, and that means like, if you're putting together a board, it actually works out because you take the cheese out of the fridge and let it um, come up to room temperature. And what you're letting it do is sort of like loosen up Mm -hmm. Mount Tam, because when it, I mean, I don't know when you took it out of the fridge, it's, I mean, it is like hard. It's like, a, you know, like this, yeah. um, but now this has been out for um, like an hour now and the cheese is getting sticky. It's like, that's what you kind of want. You want it to like, I, I don't know any other word than to say like loosen up in the, <laughs> okay. in the like warm air in, in room yeah. temperature. And you really do want to serve it at room temperature. Um, so that it's it, that so all the flavors, I mean, part, part of it is that it's like sliceable when you're sure. serving it. Um, but also, especially if you're serving not pre-sliced, but when you just put something out, like, mm -hmm. like you have on your board, like you're putting just the cheese out and someone has to slice it. It's easier to do when the cheeses are a little bit warmer or softer. Um, but yeah, like the, you want the, the fragrance and the flavors to come out of the cheese and that comes out at room temperature. Can I ask one more question about the board? Where, yeah. where do you, what happens first? <laughs> do you put the cheeses down and then build around that? Like, is it different every time? Or do you have like a general set of rules? Like I set the cheeses down and then like everything comes after. The cheeses go down first. That's the easiest okay. thing. Um, and then uh, things that are very specific to us, a certain cheese I'll put down, mm -hmm. which is usually the spreads, like the, this is a raspberry pepper jam honey, caramelized onion, apricot, put those things that do generally go with the, a cheese next, mm -hmm. and then just fill in the rest after that. And I have okay. everything out with me next to me, not right now, but when I'm doing it so that you can sure. put everything out. So, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. You make it look so darn easy. easy. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is pretty easy. Um, and it's really fun to do. So, you know, yeah. All right. Well, I know we, t we said don't drink red wine, but you know, we're going to drink red wine with cheese because it's just going to happen. Yes. Um, and it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> we're going to do it. Um, so the general rule of thumb when you're, when you're talking about red wine and cheese is you want something on the lighter side of things. And we generally want something on the fruitier side of things. So I know so many of you love, you know, your big intense Napa cabs to go with your cheeses. Um, and sometimes it's fine, you know, Lord knows there's enough wineries in Napa Valley serving wine and cheese. Um, but I thought it would be a fun spin, especially since we're talking about, you know, I mentioned earlier, what grows together goes together in the Loire Valley of France, you know, very famous for Sancerre, but also very famous, um, which is something a Blanc, uh, also very famous for Cabernet Franc. Um, so there is actually a, a bit of a, um, how, what would you call it? Uh, a renaissance for the for the Cabernet Franc grape in California, um, and I don't know I don't know if uh, you're familiar with the grape, but generally it's a blending grape. Generally, we don't see it on its own. You know, it's mixed into Cabernet Sauvignon or um, you know in, in small percentages. Uh, and of course, if you're at the right bank of Bordeaux, it's you know higher percentages. But here in California, very rarely are we seeing it on its own. But you know, the grape itself has a lot of the wonderful qualities that we love about Cabernet Sauvignon. So all of those great flavors like see some black currant, um, you know, black raspberry, uh, but it typically doesn't have quite as much tannic structure. And it also is a lot more aromatic. So we think of Cabernet Franc as sort of being, you know, the spice box for when we're blending in, blending it in with Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and so this is a really brilliant example of someone, of a wine that if you don't want to give up, you're super fancy, Napa Valley Cabernet and you want to have it with cheese, this is a perfect alternative because this is um, actually from, from um, Chris Carpenter is making it. So he's very famous for making 100 point wines like La Coya and Cardinal and La Hota. Um, but this is Caledon and this is 100, well, I shouldn't say 100, but it's mostly Cab Franc. It is blended with a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, um, all coming from a hillside vineyard. And so what this gives you is sort of the impression of Cabernet Sauvignon, but it's just a little bit lighter and a little bit softer. And I am so sorry, Sarah. I know that your wine <laughs> did not get there in time. And you're sitting there like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, that looks so delicious. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> 
Um, I'll, I'll pour myself some more of the Mary. A little more sipping of block. That's good. Um, maybe the maybe the UPS man will get there in time. Um, <laughs> this is a little a little brighter, a little bouncier. Um, you know, I think of great wines to pair, red wines to pair with cheeses like Grenache, Pinot Noir. Um, you know, even like spicier, uh, lighter wines like Morved, Carignan. Um, you know, Gamay is another great one. So, uh, you know, we've got like Prue Beaujolais in France, but in, in California, there's actually a, a fairly fairly big contingency of uh, of the Gamay grape. And it's a wonderful grape to pair with cheese. But the reason I selected this is obviously because I wanted to find that, that balance between, um, you know, someone who was like, I only want to drink a, you know, a Cabernet with my cheese. This is a great way to do it and still feel like you're, you're getting a great pairing. So, there's two ideal cheeses on this board for this wine. Um, the first is going to be the, the the diamond, the crunchy one with the Maldon sea salt. It's not really Maldon sea salt, but it tastes like it has Maldon. It tastes like it, yeah. <laughs> so the first, that's a, the hard cheeses are generally gonna be the cheeses that you wanna go with red wine. The softer, creamier, like bloomy cheeses typically are not. So you'd have to go super, super light, um, you know, like a really, really light bodied Grenache to go with a bloomy cheese like the Mount Tam. Um, you know, it definitely works with the um, Fiscalini, but I, you know, for me, this one has a little bit more texture and a little bit more um, intensity. And so it, you know, pairs better with this red wine. So I just, I would like scoop the center of this and just get the crunchy bits out of this cheese because it's so, so <laughs> yummy. Um, but for me, this is like, sweet and salty but then like texturally it's about the same um it's not too big it's not too light it's like somewhere in the middle um this particular wine you know super aromatic the thing that you're always looking for in cabernet franc is like roses so um you're always getting a lot of florals so violets roses lavender um you know it's always like a, a crazy spice box and then when you i'm sorry i'm taking a sip <laughs> you know, a lot of intensity with fruit and it sort of has that like jammy feel, um, sort of like I'm sure you've got something a little like jammy or like compote on your tray there. Or um, raspberry jam, right? Perfect, there. yes. So, and which which cheese did you put that with out of curiosity? This is the diamond, the diamond one, the diamond reserve. I'm just gonna Look call at it us diamond on the same from page. now on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just like you would pair that, you know, that raspberry compote with the diamond cheese, sort of the same thing going on with this wine. And that's what sort of makes the world go around. It's intense, it's really salty. And as you are tasting this cheese, immediately you, know, you get something that salty and that rich and that fatty, you're gonna want a couple of things. You're gonna want fruit and something that's a little bit, but or has that impression of sweetness to pair, um, to fight against that saltiness. But then you're also gonna want a little bit of acid to fight against all of the richness. And that's what this wine has. Yum. It's kind of that, per it strikes that perfect balance. Um, and it doesn't overwhelm. So if you're not someone that wants to go the, you know, the sweet sugar route with the raspberry compote, you could easily do that in the way of this glass here. The other thing you could do is go the blue cheese route. Um, blue cheese and red wine, you know, again, it's not going to be consistent across the board because not all blue cheeses are the same and not all red wines are the same. But generally speaking, hard cheeses and blue cheeses are going to be um, the cheeses that pair best with, with the red wine. Um, do you have a favorite red wine that you generally pair with your cheese? Is is that um, or a favorite wine in general to pair with cheese? Um, I mean, a favorite. I can't say there's a favorite. I mean, okay. it's but it's always it's always going to be white. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not used to doing a red wine with cheese or mm -hmm. any like all of the things on the board too that go with the cheeses. I'm not used to it. Mm -hmm. So um, when the cap Ronk gets here. <laughs> Yes. I'm definitely going to try it all, all of these things. <laughs> you know where um, Sarah will be for the next couple of hours once that arrives. Yeah. Um, there's a question about uh, putting boiled shrimp or lump crab meat on a cheese board. What are your feelings about that? Uh... <laughs> I I will say I know that in at least in the culinary space it's sort of, it's generally considered a faux pas to do seafood and cheese. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't, don't know if that's the same thing. And cheese okay. I I'm I'm sort of like the only place I see like seafood with dairy at all is maybe like a smoked salmon or caviar with like creme fraiche or mm. cream cheese or whatever. But um, I wouldn't put it on a cheese board. You could serve it at your, at a gathering, maybe, but 
definitely like keep it separate. Mm -hmm. um, also, the flavor just is really different. It's really mm -hmm. different from everything that's on the board. So yeah, yeah, a lot of palate confusion with that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we think about, you know, we talked a bit about where your palate is living in that sort of like pH uh, level, and then also just like, texturally where it's living, you know, a lot of creaminess and a lot of richness and seafood sort of the opposite of that. Um, yeah. So I like to sort of like stay in the same territory when I'm when I'm eating and then maybe um, maybe have the seafood to start and then like finish with the cheese later on. That would you know, yeah. work. have a different That's... board, have many boards. Why not? Have yeah, many I mean, a seafood board is great. You know, <laughs> a cutery board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so I will circle back to that, that truffled liver pate, super strong flavor. What are yeah, your feelings about, about having that. something? <laughs> well, I mean, what are your thoughts about having something that, like that on a cheese board or maybe adjacent to a cheese board? Uh, definitely adjacent, okay. <laughs> not on there. I mean, on a cheese board, I will put meat products, mm -hmm. like meat things. Obviously, it's very common to put like cheese and charcuterie, salumi things together. Mm -hmm. It works. Um, and I think that the like the lighter, I mean, I don't want to call them lighter, but like the sliced charcuterie kind of things go with a lot of the stuff here because it's salty, but they're like very small bites. Mm -hmm. I mean, super rich. Um, yeah, just you want to keep it towards towards it's just like a blue cheese. It's very special and you want it on the on the side. <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, truffle and any sort of liver is super strong flavors. The one thing that we haven't talked about is uh, champagne. Um, so, you know, sparkling wine in that situation, if you must have all of those different things going on at the same time. Um, and, you know, certainly during the holidays, I, you know, you'll have your charcuterie, maybe some like, you know, liver pate and some cheese. Um, your best bet, if it's not going to, if you're not going to have a couple different wines, is to just go sparkling wine. That tends to be the thing that will get you through any sort of like crazy situation you've got with many different cheese boards or many different boards in general. Um, if you've got that that truffle pate, I would say rosé champagne or rosé sparkling is probably a better bet than um, than a white champagne, just because you generally have a little bit more fruitiness. Um, and as you're talking about, you know, intensity of uh, you know something like the salty, savory truffle, the, the, you're going to want a little bit of that fruitiness. You could go with a red wine for that, um, like the Cabernet Franc, or with something that's got a little bit more acidity. So the ideal pairing would be something. Um, you know, something like a Barbera. Um, but the reality is when you're talking about super strong flavors like blue cheese and with liver pate or truffle liver pate, you actually might want to go the sweet route. Um, and that's where we're going to land um, at the very at the very end, which is, you know, what we're coming to now. So you think about one of the classic pairings is like Sauterne and foie gras. This is sort of a similar approach. So anytime you've got really strong sort of pungent flavors, very savory and salty, you know, the adjacent thing to that is going to be sweet and a little bit, you know, a little bit on the fruitier side to sort of like counterbalance that. So we've got this really fun, I don't know if, I actually had never tasted this before. I'd only ever heard about it. Um, I, had you ever had this before, this Essencia? Um, I, ha I had not had it. I tasted it um, a couple of times, which is why there's only half a bottle. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> You're my new favorite um, person. But I, I totally love it. And the, th the funny thing is I'm not, I generally, um, you know, a sweet wine for me is like a, a very special rare occasion. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like for dessert, I'd still rather have at the end of, of course. you know, a meal or dessert, sparkling mm -hmm. wine or, or cheese or something else. Um, but this, something about this, the way it smells and, Yes. I, I don't know if it's the color or what, or if I'm you just landed in a good mood or what. It is so there's good. So, many, so, many <laughs> so yes, I think you know a lot of people get scared of dessert wines and sweet wines. Like oh, I don't really like sweet wine because um, you know they can be really like unctuous and rich and like really over the top. But this is really unique. Um, this is made from the orange muscat uh, orange muscat grape, um, which is you know something you'd find in Italy. I used to make moscato very often. Um, and this is this is actually harvested, not to get super geeky, but this is harvested at 22 degrees bricks. 
Um, most, if you're talking about like a late harvest dessert wine, you're going to be up in like the thirties, you know, high, high twenties, low thirties, somewhere in there, um, trying to get all of those sugars to develop. What they do is they actually harvest it at 22 degrees, bricks, which is essentially what you'd be harvesting something like the Sauvignon Blanc for, uh, or some, something like Sauvignon Blanc at. Um, and then what they do is fortify it. So they arrest fermentation about halfway through, um, and, and allow that sugar to remain. And then they fortify it on top of that too. And they, that's how they arrest it. They you know put like a neutral spirit, it's a wine spirit. And so what you have is really, really bright acidity with that sugar. And this is why it doesn't feel so um, so viscous and so cloying. Uh, it, it has a little bit more lift to it because that acidity is retained by way of harvesting a little bit earlier and it's not a late harvest. So. You know, maybe what it is. Yeah, so it's not so intense. Um, so it feels a little bit more like a wine than it does does something like a sauterne, something that's you know mm -hmm. just kind of left out in the vine for all of eternity and then pressed off, and then all you're getting is that sticky, sticky sweetness. Um, so this is really fun. Um, it's interesting. Uh, they do recommend, I mean, you can they recommend drinking this on its own, but they also say you could mix it into a sparkling wine, which. I think honestly, this might be my new like secret stash to have in my fridge because how many times, I don't know about you, but my family, like my mom comes over and she's like, oh, I really want a wine. Like, you know, it's, it's too dry for me. Um, and she wants something a little sweeter and you could potentially put a little dash of this into some sparkling wine and like make a nice, like, you know, it's not a super spritzer, <laughs> a spritzer light and like airy and really fun. Um, and you could do that with lots of different cheeses as well. So um, you, you hit the nail on the head with, it's just jumping out of the glass. Orange Muscat is a crazy, crazy aromatic grape. It's, you know, it's floral. It smells like orange blossoms. You know, it smells like, you know, candied lemons, candy Meyer lemon, all of those great like citrus, um, you know, sort of, there's almost like a chamomile and honey thing coming on too. Um, so I think about like, there's a corner of your board, um, that I'm seeing that like, you know, it's just sort of like, I can kind of pick it up. I think it's that one. Yeah. There's like, there's, yeah, there's some like apricots there somewhere in the middle. There's the apricots here. Yeah. And then there's candy. There's actually candied oranges right here. Yes. Okay. So um, that's, that's where I am on your board with this wine right now. So, <laughs> you know, what's funny is, so when I was tasting, when I was tasting this wine, um, in advance pr preparing, that's right. I, I was like, look, I'm going to just taste a bunch of different cheeses with the wine. And, mm -hmm. um, I don't like just grab a wedge of blue for myself and eat it, but <laughs> um, for the purposes what? of this, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to put this blue cheese and I didn't think ever to put it with, I mean, I've always put blue cheese with honey and like walnuts. That's mm -hmm. very um, standard, I guess, like very like normal pairing. Mm -hmm. um, but I put the blue with this candied orange and it was so good because there's mm -hmm. like I mean there's like a slight bitterness too because like wine is just like has that like not bitter but like yeah it has like that a natural thing. phenolicness yeah um and then with this it was like wow this is a I mean I wild it. It right so unexpected and lovely and I couldn't believe that it was <laughs> it was real you know you don't I I don't always like have these like revelations or epiphanies about cheese and wine. I mean, I have great taste, but that was, that was a good one with this. It is, it is a good one. And this is really the ideal pairing for blue cheese um, is to go with a sweet wine. So blue cheese typically wants the opposite of what it is. So it's wants a little bit of, of sweetness. And to your point, um, this oh. wine does retain a little bit of that like phenolic bitterness. Um, so it does, you know, it's, it's not the total opposite. There is sort of like a, a through line, a component that ties the two together. Um, but there, this is a revelatory pairing when you've got some blue cheese and some sweet wine like this. My goodness, the angels sing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I love this cheese. Oh, so cheese and the wine together. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this wine, I know, I, know, I know during like a cocktail party, you're not going to want to serve a sweet wine. But, you know, if you're thinking about cheese as a dessert, which, you know, I know in, in America, we tend to have cheese. That's what I do. I eat cake for dessert. <laughs> I don't know what all these people are eating right. cake for, but. 
<laughs> Cheese, I, obviously, in, in other countries, is often dessert. And, you know, this is the perfect finish for me. It's like a cheese board like this, a couple slices, and a nice, like, you know, sweeter dessert wine. This isn't cloying. It's not over the top. It's not going to throw your palate. It's just sort of going to clean up a little bit. Um, and this, you know, pairs with all of these cheeses on, on the board. Um, and circling back to the, the truffle liver pate, this is actually something that would pair really well with that. The only thing I will say is when you're, you're dealing with a pate, especially like a, a darker pate um, and liver, you might want more of like a red dessert wine. So something like a port, like a tawny port, um, you know, uh, banyols or something like that. Um, there's equivalents of that in California. That's just sort of the, gen the general, um, stereotype or marker for those wines that you'd be looking for. So red is really where you're going to want to be for that. Um, but this would certainly work really, really well and sort of, you know, give a really fun, a fun way to like pull out all of those flavors and, you know, capture the savory stuff as well. So I have, I have a lot of cheese and you have a big board in front of you. What happens with all I, these boards when you're done? <laughs> um, you know, I just pretty much eat it all day long, but, <laughs> you know, um, and then, you know, friends and family around, they got to come and, I mean, in small gatherings, obviously, right sure. now, but yeah. got to eat, got to have all of the peeps come and help me. And well, when there's wine involved, they definitely will show up. <laughs> they flock. That's right. Well, you've got, you've got plenty of wine and plenty of cheese. I've got plenty of both as well, but not as much family around, although you never know, <laughs> they might just show up. Show I heard up. there was, I heard there was cheese. Um, well, we, I think we've captured, you know, what we, we've accomplished what we wanted to today with, uh, with cheese and with wine. We certainly drank a bit and um, had some delicious cheese. I definitely learned a thing or two from you, Sarah. Um, I just cannot get over how beautiful that board is. So um, where can people go and find more of these delicious boards and, you know, see the gorgeous things that you're doing? Um, all of this stuff is on the Instagram okay. um, at the delicious. And for detail, like recipes, it'll always point to a place on the deliciouslife.com. If there are recipes, like this is a recipe, there's a recipe for this. Um, this is a recipe from someone else, but I can point you to that. Um, but yeah, most of the pictures of all of the stuff is on Instagram. Wonderful. Um, well, I, I'm a follower of yours, so I will continue to follow you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for like... I mean, now I could just, can I just have like a case of each of these and like, I could probably do sure. it for six months. I think you're good to go. Like whatever pandemic may or may not strike next, like you're solid. You're, yeah, you're covered. This, this is perfect. Yeah. I'll wait for the red <laughs> wine to try it too. <laughs> yes. Um, well, just a refresher for everyone. Uh, we started with that gorgeous Mary, Mary Edwards Sauvignon Blanc from the Russian River Valley. We then migrated into the red territory and had the Caledon 2016 Napa Valley Cabernet Franc. Um, and then we finished with, I don't know if I said the name of this, uh, the Quady, uh, Q-U-A-D-Y, uh, Essencia Orange Blossom Muscat uh, dessert wine. They, they do lots of really cool things over there. He makes vermouth, he makes you know, these dessert wines, um, you know, definitely, definitely a bit of a maverick in that sense. Um, and then the, the cheeses, of course, all from real California milk. Calgary Creamery Mount Tam, one of my personal favorites, a cheese that I will almost always, always, always have on the cheese board. Um, like you, this one was new to me. This is the Fiscalini San Joaquin mm -hmm. Gold. Um, Love then it. We, yeah, it was super, super tasty. Um, that crunchy sort of Maldon salty one, uh, that was the, the the one that we couldn't say. I'm sorry to the family. S-T-U-Y, <laughs> teased. I'm going to say we'll stout, learn it. if not right. We'll learn it. Um, stout <laughs> Dairy Diamond Reserve. Uh, and then, of course, the Point Reyes Blue Cheese. Um, that was our very, very last cheese. And sorry for the lighting, guys. Um, so that, that you know, covers us for today and gets us through the rest of the night to uh, to dinner, I suppose. Um, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think this is going to last me the whole weekend. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, but thank you all so much for watching, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be back here once more on Facebook next week uh, for our very, very final of our Facebook Live series. I'll be joined uh, by Kate Ramos, who's going to be talking about desserts for the holidays. So a little bit more dessert wine for you. Um, and then tomorrow, as always, I'll be on Instagram Live with Aida Mullenkamp over at uh, Salt and Wind. She joins from California Grown. I come on from California Wines. We have a great time. We talk about wine. We talk about food. And it's a it's just a joy. So I hope you'll to see you guys there. So thank you again, Sarah. And really nice to uh, to chat wine and cheese with you. I'm down to do it anytime. So you just let me know when you want to bring yeah. the board and I will take care of the wine. Yes, please. <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> of course. I'll see you all when I see you next time. Bye. Bye.